everyone who studied history. It's basic to any school curriculums. And the question every student has is, how much of this do we have to know? Why is history even important? History is important because it's the big picture of human existence. History is really a very all-encompassing perspective of man's existence. Therefore, history is very closely associated with a religious view because a religious view is supposed to address the big picture, the all-encompassing picture. So it's no accident that the Bible is presented to us largely as a history book. It has a beginning in creation and an end in the eternal kingdom. So much of the history of salvation and God's covenant people is in terms of the historical development of those ideas and the historical problems of apostasy and judgment. So we can't avoid the topic of history. It's all around us, and we are part of history. The question is, how do we take the religion that we profess, the faith that we profess, and apply it to a view of history? The predominant philosophy of the 20th and 21st centuries has been a naturalistic one after Charles Darwin. That is an evolutionary one. Evolution says that everything is interpreted naturalistically, that everything is just a culmination of various physical forces within matter confront that with the Bible's supernatural view of history. So what governs history? Is it nature itself? Or is nature itself a creation of an omnipotent God? All of our existence, all of our religious ideas have to be applied to our view of history, or we become schizophrenic. Creation was an act. It wasn't a process. Creation is an act of a sovereign God. History has to be understood in terms of God. And the biblical philosophy of history is based on the doctrine of creation. All things we believe are the handiwork of a sovereign, omnipotent, triune God. We aren't subject to a process such as evolution because much of history today, in terms of naturalism, is discussed as a process, a process which perhaps man can manipulate. Therefore, we have scientific socialism, science applied to the culture and politics. And so you have men trying to control the evolutionary development of history. Instead, we view our culture and our lives as dependent upon a sovereign God, and man answers to that God. And so we have a standard of law, we have a standard of justice, a standard of truth, and a standard of personal behavior to which we hold ourselves. History as a process, in the evolutionary sense, means God's not really the creator. In fact, naturalism believes that God is in effect, a creation of man. Because if man evolved, then where did God and religion come from? Obviously, it's a creation of man for his psychological or social needs. Creation, in fact, is under God's government and predestination. So all of history has to be understood in terms of the purposes of God. By way of example, we could discuss the issue of law. Where does law come from? What is the source of law? The biblical faith is that God's law is over creation because God is over creation. And therefore, man is responsible to obey God and his revelation of himself and his character. Any kind of naturalistic evolutionary belief in historical process means that law at best, if there is a law, and that's debated in naturalistic circles, but if there is a law, then it has to come from within nature itself. In fact, the Catholics developed this concept of natural law, that law was somehow within nature and could be discovered by man. But where does that idea come from? But from the idea that law is within nature because nature itself is ultimate. And unfortunately, the Catholic Church today does espouse an evolutionary origin of the universe. If law is within nature, then how do we know that law? And it's only by reason. So... A naturalistic perspective on law leads to an emphasis on man's reason. So reason became all important after the Enlightenment. Problem was, along came a man named Darwin, and he said, wait a minute, a better understanding of naturalism is that it's chaotic and it's random chance. So since Charles Darwin, the whole idea of law in nature hasn't really made much sense. So the modern world is really without a source of law except arbitrary status law. And that is why our laws have changed so dramatically since Darwin. And it's not a revolution in law, but it's multiple revolutions, because no one can really come up with a standard of law. 
we have no standard of law, no standard of truth, no standard of justice if there is no real concept of absolute law or source of law. In fact, naturalism has split into two camps. After the Enlightenment, the belief was in natural law and faith was in the process itself. In other words, nature was supreme. After Darwin, there was a belief that nature was chaotic, so man has to control it, and therefore you had the idea of science becoming supreme. Man is supreme. And so the unbelieving world is in rebellion against God, can't itself agree on the concept of truth. So that's why we've had such a revolution in thought, and now seemingly any idea is now legitimate. It's really led to anarchy in our very concept of law. And we could apply this to any number of areas. There is no standard since Charles Darwin said that everything is basically the result of chaos and randomness. Naturalism really precludes any appeal beyond man because man is the culmination of the evolutionary process. And so you end up with man's word and statism. The only alternative to the humanism that always results from naturalism is a belief in God as the creator and sustainer. And the alternative to man's word is God's word. This is our understanding of every area of life and thought, that God is supreme and that God does not change. Therefore, we are responsible to God in all things. As Christians, we're to become new creatures in Christ. We're to change not only our personal lives, but our thinking, our perspective on all of life and all of time and eternity have to be conformed to what we are told in God's word. And so I believe that a biblical philosophy of history is important. If you can understand the basic concept that Christianity interprets all of human history, then you'll see how it can be used to understand our culture, our family, our vocations, and smaller components of time and eternity. I would recommend a book to you that written by my father. It's called The Biblical Philosophy of History. And this he deals about this big picture of existence and how we have to understand it in terms of the revealed Word of God.